Hello and good morning. I am Carolyn, your host, and welcome to this week's weekly mini, your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. You can reference all of our previous weekly minis and more amazing content on our Acrobatic Arts channel on YouTube. Check the comments for that link. If you have any questions while we're live, drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer those for you at the end of the presentation. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing about today's topic, be a friend and click the share button on this post right now and let them know we're here. Today, we are so fortunate to have acrobatic arts master teacher and resident acro dance preschool expert, Loren Dermody, who will share with us stretching fun for preschoolers. Loren has been with acrobatic arts since the beginning, and she continues to share her creativity and years of experience towards the growth of new programs and the expansion of the syllabus. She is an acrobatic arts course conductor, examiner, head of research and development for acrobatic arts, the current host for the acrobatic arts podcast and co-creator of Baton Arts. We are in good hands this morning. Welcome, Loren. Thank you, Carolyn. Everyone, thanks for showing up today. We're gonna get started with the presentation stretching fun with your preschoolers. And this topic is really, I'm passionate about it because I think stretching is for everyone, not just your young ones. So you could even try some of these stretches at home if you're watching and you're feeling energetic today. But with our preschoolers today, I'm going to focus on four main acro skills or positions that we stretch in. Butterfly, straddle, pike, and tuck. The first one we're going to look at is butterfly. So butterfly position is a hip opener. It stretches the adductors as well as the quadriceps. It also improves posture and body awareness, which is really great at the young age. Now, when we're talking about stretching with the preschoolers and keeping it fun, we have to as always, if you've seen some of the other weekly minis that I've done, we have to do a game or a song to keep them engaged. So for Butterfly, I actually have a game called Turtle, and I'll play that for you now. Who has seen a turtle before? What do turtles have on their backs? A shell. Is the shell soft? Is it hard? Right. Is it hard like this? Yeah, to protect them, right? So they have hard shells. So we're going to sit up tall in butterfly position, and we are going to go down and pretend that we are turtles in our shell. So you have to go all the way down. Good. Now, you're staying down in your shell. Someone's knocking on your shell. Slowly poke your head out all the way up. Look over here. Look over there. What else do you think we might scare a? What? A lion. I see a lion. Go down. Be safe. Slowly poke your head up. Good, look over here, look over there. What else might you see? A creature, go down. All right, so that's the turtle game. And you can see that by having a story, the children get a little more involved. And the number one rule when we're in the stretching circle is to stay in that position. And so that helps them. Then maybe that whole month, I'm really focusing on butterfly in class. I might give them a coloring page that we have at Acrobatic Arts. This one is of butterfly. So I would hand it out at the end of class. They can take it home. And hopefully then when they're coloring it, they'll remember the turtle game or they'll remember the butterfly stretch. And then they'll get a little uh, extra stretching in that week. The next one I'm going to talk about is straddle. Straddle position is also a hip opener. It stretches the hamstrings and the calves, as well as the adductors and the groin muscles. So anyone that's done this one, you know that you can feel this one right away. And it's a great position to have your preschoolers in. For the game of this one, we do Let's Make a Pizza. Today we're going to make a pizza. Who likes pizza? 
good. Okay, what do you have to have first for pizza? Dough, that's right. Our, the number one rule is we have to stay in straddle. Are you in straddle? That's with your legs. Good, we have to stay in straddle. We're going to, first we're going to knead the dough. It's in your big bowl. Good, then what do you have to do? Roll it and try to make the biggest pizza slice ever. Super big for a giant. Good. Okay, now we've got our dough all nice and flat. What do we put on the dough? Good. Were you going to say sauce? Yes? Okay, everyone put some sauce on. Pour it on. Maybe smooth it out. Good. Remember, it's a big pizza. Just get all the edges. Good. Now, does anyone like cheese on their pizza? I love cheese. So, you have to grate the cheese. And if you like lots of cheese, you're putting on lots of cheese. Maybe double cheese. I like cheese. All right. We're sticking with a cheese pizza. Is there anyone who would like to put pepperoni on? Okay. I don't like pepperoni, so I won't be putting any on, but you go ahead and put some pepperoni on your pizza. Yeah, you don't have to. Good. Does anyone like pineapple? I like a little bit. I'm just putting a few pieces of pineapple on. Okay. Once our pizza's done, what do we have to do to it? We have to put it in the oven. So you have to reach the oven is way in the middle. Yeah, way in the middle. We got to get that pizza cooked. Ding, ding. Bring it out. Perfect pizza. Take a bite. How is it? The best pizza ever? Very good. Yeah, yours was good. I know. Okay. All right. So that's our pizza game. You can keep them going uh, for quite a while. But remember, staying in straddle is the key point for this stretching exercise. And again, I would hand out a coloring page of straddle. This one happens to be them making a pizza. So it's perfect. Hand it out. They take it home and hopefully they color and stretch. Now I'm going to talk about pike position. Pike position is this one down here that's circled and it stretches the hamstrings and the calves as well as it strengthens the back muscles and improves spinal awareness and as well as posture. So this is a great one, especially the sitting up tall part of pike. Now for the game, we sit in pike and we play good feet, bad feet. Uh, that's when your feet are flexed and stretched. And then we slowly sneak up on the bad feet and make them good feet. Now, sometimes, guess what happens to those naughty feet? When they're up, sometimes they don't want to go down. So do you know what we have to do? We're going to take two fingers. Can you find two fingers? Good. And we have to quietly go down. You're sneaking up on them. Quiet, quiet, quiet. And then you push them down. Good. And sit back up. Uh-oh, naughty feet. Good. Up to the ceiling, Gabriel. Yeah, there we go. Where's the two fingers? And push them down. Good feet, good feet, good feet, good. Sit up one more time. What happens? Bad feet. Take your two fingers. Quiet, quiet, quiet. And good feet. Yay! Good. And now they stay good feet. So you can see the children really like that story. And they're stretching and it takes their mind maybe off the discomfort that they're feeling. And look at that, I have a coloring page to hand out. This girl is in pike position, she's at the beach, she's having fun, and that's what stretching should be all about. The last one I'll talk about is tuck position. And that's this one down here in the corner. And you can see that this dancer is, has his back rounded. So we call that flexion. And generally in acro dance, we work a lot on extension in a bridge, um, you know, cobra, but it's really important that we work the spine muscles both ways, the muscles of the spine both ways. And so tuck is a great one for that. So the game that we're playing is called good tuck, bad tuck. And I'll show you what that looks like. 
Now, everyone has a good tuck position. So show me your good tuck. Good, all the way down, Skyla. And now show me bad tuck. What would be a bad tuck? <laughs> yeah, this doesn't even look like a tuck. <laughs> it's a crazy tuck. And show me good tuck. Good, back right down. And show me bad tuck. Go oh, even more, Gabriel. What's the worst tuck you could do? That's pretty bad, yeah. And show me good tuck. And bad tuck. And good tuck. And bad tuck. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that is sure a bad tuck. All right, so again, the dancers really like being bad, um, but make sure they have a nice technically correct tuck position before you start this game. And I have another coloring sheet to hand out. This one is tuck and there's turtles in it. They might even do the turtle game, but you can see that we really want to get that flexion of the spine. So you can hand this out. Hopefully they color and stretch at home and they'll get a little more practice throughout the week. So depending on the levels of your young students, there are many, many more stretches that you can have fun with. We did these top four, butterfly, straddle, pike, and tuck, but we also do downward dog, forward bend, superhero, baby bridge, ball pose, uh, splits, big bridge, and cobra. And as I said, there's many more. So no matter what age, I think we should all remember to stretch because it's good for you. Awesome job, Miss Lauren. That was amazing. Um, I have to say what I love about it so much is just really um, how much uh, students or young students can learn through the language of fun. They were having so much fun. That was awesome. Um, so lots of great tips and ideas there too. And the ever so controversial topic of pineapple on pizza. So. <laughs> Yes. yes. Um, so um, we'll leave the um, comment section open for any questions. Um, I will also put right now, as we're speaking, the link to the Acrobatic Arts Acrodance Preschool Certification Course. We have upcoming, these are online courses. They take place over two days and they are, I believe, two two hours each. So spread out makes great use of your time. They're available on lots of different time zones. So that's available to you as well. It's one of our most popular courses and they do sell out quickly. I know the one that we have coming up in May, I believe has one spot left. And then we have a couple in June and July. So they, they are continual, they are ongoing through the summer teachers. So it's a great opportunity for you to um, level up. Also preschool classes are a great place to start the foundation of your preschool or of your acro dance program in your studio, starting really Really early on with those progressions so that it's instilled in your young dancers as they move forward into their acro dance career. Uh, it certainly can make a huge difference to your program and lots of other amazing, amazing things can come from it within your studio. So Melissa says um, uh, she's tagging somebody and saying that this is great for um, their classes and we would agree. So Miss Loren, you're off the hook. No other questions for you today. I'll put that link here for you, but thank you again, Miss Loren. Thank you, Carolyn. And all of you teachers for joining us for this weekly mini. Join us next week where we'll be back chatting with a special guest, Nick Silvero from Artswork. We'll be here to talk about acrocomp adjudication, tis the season, and how adjudicators judge acro elements. This will be one not to miss for those of you in the midst or heading into dance competition season now and in the future. If you'd like to know more about our renowned acro dance preschool certification, we have a number of courses coming out and up that are selling out fast. This is your time to level up teachers. Visit acrobaticarts.com for more information. Join us again next week. See you then. Bye.